Uh, they literally took a lead pipe and stuffed it down this woman's mouth and busted out the back of her throat with it. So this video is gonna be a little messed up. JD has a crazy prison story to tell us, and I'm just gonna let him like take over the channel today and tell us a crazy prison story about uh, drugs getting brought into a prison and maiming someone for them because prison be crazy, uh, don't break the law. <laughs> but I'm gonna pass it to JD, and all of the other videos that I've already filmed with him are in the description box linked down below. So if this is the first time you're seeing this crazy beast, uh, watch the other videos first, probably for some context. <laughs> Hi, everybody. Uh, do not try this at home. Uh, this is not good for your health. It's not good for your freedom. Uh, these people were not free, actually. This was at the prison that I went to, Oregon State Penitentiary. They used to have a music program there. Uh, and the music program, if you had 18 months of clear conduct, you would get to go up and they were like forming bands and there was a metal band and two members of this metal band, one of which was uh, one of the Dairy Mart murderers from Eugene, Oregon. Uh, his name was Jason Bromwell and I don't normally name drop, but like this dude's terrible. So I don't really care. This backstory is wild in and of itself. Him and two of his friends went into a convenience store that they have in Oregon that's called Dairy Mart and they, there were two female workers there who were working late at night and they were just getting ready to close up. These dudes went in, they brutally assaulted and murdered these two women. Uh, they literally took a lead pipe and stuffed it down this woman's mouth and busted out the back of her throat with it. Uh, it was absolutely brutal. They took all the booze, all the cigarettes, all the money, and all the lottery tickets. Now, how they got caught was through those lottery tickets because lottery tickets have numbers on them. So these geniuses decided they needed more money after they spent all that other money to get Slayer tickets. And they started returning winning lottery tickets that led the police right back to them. And all three of them got massive sentences. Jason Bromwell was already doing life at OSP when this music room incident happened. And this is why I never got to play music when I was there, besides the fact that I've never had 18 months clear conduct anywhere in my life. Uh, in any way, shape, or form. But that's beside the point. The availability was gone. This is what happened. So there was a dude who used to bring dope in through visiting, right? His girlfriend would come in, she would buy a thing of Skittles out of the, the little machine, the candy machine, and she would take them to the bathroom where she would pull little balloons full of heroin out of her vagina and put them into the bag of Skittles. Then she would go back to the table and she would put the Skittles on the table. He would start eating them and swallowing the balloons and then he would come back to his cell and he would either vomit them maybe crap them out and dig through his crap. I'm not sure what method he was using. That's a little bit personal for me, but we know those are the two methods. You either got to or you got to either way. It's a bad look. Just to pause, like you should never do that, but I'm sure he'd want to throw it up because if a balloon pops, you're dead, dude. Like that's a lot of stuff that he's bringing in and I'm assuming he wasn't a heroin addict or he was, was he selling it and using it or? You know, the thing of the matter is that I didn't know him very well. I'm assuming he was doing both. Okay. Uh, I would assume that it would probably be best to get it out as quick as possible. I'm going off my own personal experience here because I have learned through life experience that I have zero gag reflex. I have tried to make myself throw up and it did not work. I literally throat fucked myself with a toothbrush. I popped every blood vessel in my eye. Okay. I was like, for my life trying to throw up and I couldn't make myself do it. We know, Chris. <laughs> Shut up. No homo. <clears throat> so yeah. Maybe that's not the job for you then in prison. You know, maybe cross that off the list of talents as a criminal. No, like if I'm gonna mule something in, I'm definitely going straight for the prison pocket. We heard the Manny story. Um this dude came back from a visit and he was walking across the control room floor. Now, the unit is like this side. The visiting room's this side, and the music room's off to this side of the control room floor. Jason saw this dude, he knew that he had just come out of a visit, and he said, hey man, we're going up to do band practice, come check out our new song, right? Lures this dude up to the music room, they get him up there, and they're trying to get him to puke up the balloons. And he's like telling them there's no dope, there's no dope. I saw my mom, I didn't see my girlfriend. They do not believe him. So they end up beating this dude to death, holding him down, beating him to death, and they start carving his stomach open and digging through his intestines, trying to find these balloons of drugs. Well, dude wasn't lying. 
he went to see his mom that day. There really were no drugs. They just brutally cut him open, dug through his guts, like literally two dudes digging through intestines, trying to feel around for little balloons inside his intestines. And they got the music room shut down forever. Now, these dudes were both already doing life sentences and they both got sentenced to death. The state of Oregon has since decided that they don't give anybody the death penalty anymore. So they reversed that. So these dudes are just doing life now, even after taking another life while in prison. Uh, the morality of that, I'm not gonna get into. The story in and of itself, I think is pretty wild. I mean, it's crazy. So a lot of people that have never been to prison, you think like, hey, if you're serving a life sentence, um, on a murder charge, it's not a big deal to take another life in prison, but your whole life changes in prison if you take another life. So can you explain like the process of that and what their life looked like for a long time? Because they have to go to trial, they're probably being locked down and like all of that. Absolutely. So like the first thing that's going to happen is you're immediately going to be taken, you're going to be taken to county, you're going to be booked in on new charges. And so you're comfortable at a decent place, you know what I'm saying? Like. OSP is a very comfortable place if you're a lifer, you're very lucky if you get there. That's where they keep most of the lifers and most of the gang members. And you get pretty much left alone. That's what I liked about OSP personally. Like the guards there, the COs, they're pretty much like, look, don't stab us and we don't care. Like do what you do, don't put us on front street. It's not like petty like all the rest of the places in the state. So uh, you have to go back to county where everything is really petty. You start with having absolutely nothing. Uh, you have zero freedoms. Like if you go back to county on a murder, I, I'm assuming they immediately put you into segregation and you probably sit there if you're on an institutional murder and you sit there for however long that case takes, which with a murder trial can be years. And uh, then once you get sentenced, whatever your sentence is, you know, they got put on death row. So then when they take you back after you're sentenced, you get put in death row. And when you're in death row, you are in like constant isolation. They don't let you have any access to any other human beings. Everything you eat comes through a tray slot. You have zero opportunity to be able to actually get at anyone. And in fact, when Jason Bromwell was sentenced, he looked at the judge when they asked if he had anything to say, and he told the judge, and I quote, if you don't kill me today, you are a fool because anyone I get my hands on from this point out, I am going to kill. This is what he said to his sentencing judge. He later went back in appeals because you get multiple appeals anytime you have a death sentence. And he retracted that statement. He tried to make it good with the judge. He tried to make it seem like he wasn't gonna do anything, but they continually turned down his appeals and he was still on death row until the governor of Oregon took away the death sentence and let all of these people off of death row. So did you do time with him? Like, were you guys in the same dorm? You knew him? I actually knew him from the streets. I was, I went to high school with his sister and he had killed his sister's cat. They did this like ritual oh and killed God. his sister's cat. Uh, she had an all black cat. So like this dude was like long demented. By the time I actually got to prison, he had just, this had just happened. And so like, I wasn't there at the exact time that it happened, but everybody was talking about it. It was like the big hot topic. Right. Uh, and a lot of people were pissed off because the music program got shut down. A lot of people thought he was awesome for doing such a grotesque act. Now, the dude who they killed happened to be a gang member from another race mm. that actually rode with the white boys and he was a white boy so there was a lot of tension and it seemed like it might pop off so there was a lot of tension like racially between the whites and this other gang and like i don't name organizations that's one of my rules if anybody's seen any of my videos uh, i do not name organizations anybody's organization, the organization that I was a part of, or any other organization, quite simply because a lot of stuff can come back if they're trying to build organized crime cases, and my name's never gonna be in any of those indictments, so I keep it vague when it comes to those things. But it was so close to, to popping off, you could feel the tension when I landed at, at OSP. And my very first night there, my celly ran the whole thing down to me and was like, look, it might come down to a, to a a race issue, you know what time it is. In prison, if it comes down to a race issue, if you don't stand by your race, you will get taken out by your own race. At least on the West Coast, 
I don't know how it goes in every state or every prison. I haven't done time in every state. I haven't done time in every prison. There's also federal prisons, so there's a huge variance in the politics, but this is one of the main rules as far as like the politics go in prisons on the West Coast. If your race pops off with another race, you have to jump in. Regardless of the situation, right or wrong, you have to jump in or your own race will take you out afterwards. There's a lot of people in there that are just plain liabilities. And that's a huge part of why your each race is supposed to police their own. So like out here on the streets, you see a lot of wild videos all the time on the internet of you know people just popping off with saying racial profanities and slurs like constantly on the streets. And a lot of people get the feeling that because like prison is a racially based place a lot of the time that that happens in there. If that happens, if a white dude starts popping off racial profanities at another race, the other white dudes swiftly take care of him. And it works that way with all the races because what will happen is you'll get a race war which is bad for business all the way across the board. Everybody has hustles in place, everybody has things in place that they're doing, the ways that they're making money, you know, the territories that they've all got locked down as far as their races and their gangs. Everybody goes back to square one if there's a race war because everybody will be on lockdown for an indeterminate amount of time. A lot of people that are really important are going to be taken immediately to segregation and probably do whole time than IMU time. It's just bad all the way around so we avoid that at all costs. So something I know I don't talk about a lot is the fact that the prison wants y'all fighting. They want gangs, they want all of that because if you're fighting each other, you're not fighting them, you're not fighting the system. So look, I went in not in a gang. And when I was in intake, they do an assessment. They're at Coffee Creek, which is the women's prison and the men's intake prison. So you're literally like on the other side of the fence from women when you're out on the yard. Um, and it's usually a 30 day process for the most part, unless you have like STG factors, which is like security threat group factors. I went in, not clicked up, no intention of clicking up. And within my first two weeks there, I had an assessment. They looked at my tattoos and they told me, well, you're a part of a gang. You're either a part of this gang or you're a part of this gang. And I'm like, I'm not a part of any gang. I'm a white boy. White boys don't do gangs. Like just playing stupid, like just trying to play it off. I really wasn't though. And they were like, well, we don't believe any of that. We're marking you down as this gang. And uh, so then when I, when I got up to an actual prison, when they sent me to Snake River, they immediately sold me up with people from that gang. And the first person they put me in with was one of the shot callers, one of the key holders from that gang. And he was actually from my own town. And he was there for killing his uncle because his uncle had been molesting his little sister and the family had gone to the police and the police weren't doing anything about it and so he ended up killing and chopping up his uncle and burying his uncle in different pieces in different places uh and he was like 17 years old and they gave him like a double life sentence for that uh and he was such a good dude and he would like had such solidity to him he immediately started teaching me a lot about Irish culture, about our history, and the car that he ran with was treated more like a more like a family unit mm -hmm. than it was like any type of political prison gang and it wasn't like racially supremacist in any way shape or form. Uh we didn't get into any of the racial politics at all whatsoever. We just did our own thing and operated within the prison system and made our money and did our time and did what we did. So I ended up being labeled in that gang before I was in that gang and I just ended up going with it. Most people would never say this guy was a really good dude, but he like killed someone and chopped up a body, you know? So can you explain like a little bit more like in prison, like in the prison world, how you can say like this person killed someone and chopped up a body, but he's a really good dude. Look, I don't think it matters whether it's the prison world or on the streets. If someone is harming a child, action needs to be taken to protect that child at any cost. Mm -hmm. If that means you go to the police, you go to the police. There's no way to tell on a sex offender. Snitching rules do not apply when it comes to somebody who is forcing themselves sexually on another human being, whether it be a woman, a child, elderly, disabled, any type of animal, a weaker man. If it's a sexually based crime, you are not covered by the code of convicts. Mm -hmm. 
you are a piece of shit and you get whatever you have coming to you. So when the police failed to protect this young girl, this child, and he took the matter into his own hands, I have no issue with that morally. Neither do I. Like you protected a child. Mm -hmm. You tried to go through the proper outlets. Yeah. Nobody would listen. And the thing is, is that we don't listen to victims until they're dead in this society. If 99% of the time, if you go and you say, look, this is happening, even if they believe you, you're gonna get so scrutinized during uh, going through processing, getting a rape kit, through the, the court scenario, you know what I'm saying? And like, I completely understand that, you know, you get a defense legally and everything, but we re-traumatize the victim over and over and over and over again. And they have to go through so much if you can't even get the cops to go out and really look into it, they don't believe you right off rip. Like, where's the justice in that? If this dude at 17 years old had the fortitude inside himself to say, I need to protect my sister no matter what that means or what that costs me. I fully agree with you. And the people that have never gone through it, they're the loudest fucking people about it. You know, they have the most opinions about it. So my battery's dying, if I'm being honest. Um, but I'm gonna link all of JD's social medias in the description box down below and his clothing line, which is Convict Clothing. And uh, he has like kill pedophile shirts. They're fire, y'all need one. Is there anything else you wanna say before the battery dies and I kick you off the channel? I appreciate you taking the time to do content with me. Uh, Jess has actually been pretty instrumental in me starting my YouTube because I was just kind of doing the TikTok thing. And I have grown a really cool community that means a lot to me. And it's given me another way to be able to reach people, to help people that need help in recovery and with mental health. I know that we've talked about some wild stuff here today, but there's a much lighter and brighter side to my content and what my mission is uh, in both recovery and just in life. So check it out. Okay, bye guys. I'll see you in the next one. Subscribe or else. <laughs> It tastes like steaks and mushrooms. No eating mushrooms. Did you just set a rule that I know wasn't aware of? Ready? All I see is like my knees. It's fine. Are you ready, Jess? No. Hey, Jess Ken, uh, tested, read and approved. What? No. Give <laughs> <laughs> it back. What? No, this was a gift. The I fuck can't it give the gift. Oh. Okay. Can I film a fucking video, please? Can I do my job? <laughs> the fucking captions over here are amazing. Is everything right? I do, and a lot more probably.